Leap Rippers, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another episode. So we got another studio talk. Um, so this video is going to be talking about my top five subsurface bass lures. Um, if you didn't see last week's video was my top five surface bass lures. So if that interests you, jump on over, check it out guys. So yeah, basically studio, we're just going to be talking about lures, gear reviews, all that good stuff when I have time or the weather is no good for fishing. So let's get into it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like and chuck in some comments below. So yeah, top five subsurface bass lures. This is my list, so it's gonna be different to everybody else's. This is what works for me and this is what I like to throw around. So stay tuned and let's get it. All right guys, so my number five subsurface bass lures of all time well not really a lure but you can obviously add lures to it is the old trusty beetle spins or under spins or jig with a spinner whatever you want to call these guys so there's obviously heaps of different weights that you can choose from basically it's just a jig head with a little rolling swivel there with a little silver spinny guy little spinner and you can add a massive range of different plastics so depending where you're fishing what areas you're fishing you can obviously change from different weights to different profile plastics so this guy here is a 3 8 of an ounce jig head big four inch paddle tail little fish arrows there so this guy will be more targeting deeper banks especially around dams if you're fishing like hins dam that kind of thing in that kind of eight to ten meters of water basically throw it in slow roll it out through the schools and you'll get absolutely hammered so I like these guys just because they're a supernatural profile and obviously bass like anything shiny so you kind of trick up a plastic basically um, so very versatile like I said you can have a different different weights different plastics change it up um, you know these beetle spins have been around forever they catch fish it is a little bit old school but you know like I said they catch fish and that's what I'm all for I don't care if I'm using a, a 20 year old lure or a brand new high tech just off the shelf lure. As long as it catches fish, I'm a happy man. So that's my number five subsurface bass lure, the old trusty beetle spin. Quickly show you a couple of tra trailers I like to use, just depending again where I'm fishing and what kind of depths and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you can go from anything from Mollock's three and a half inch RT shads. Um, so that'll be really good on those 3 8 even half ounce beetle spins. You can get some Australian made Munro soft plastics. They're in a mode oil colour. I can use sub zero colour, the white colour, drop it down to like a quarter ounce or even a six beetle spin. They're really good if the bass are kind of high or suspended up in the water column. Um, yeah, just any kind of four, three to four inch paddle tails or even curly tails, really good, depends. On the day, I like to switch it up, obviously, change up different colors. They're four inch paddle tail by Fish Arrow, super realistic. Those clear ones are really, really good for dam fishing because they look like a bony brim. Um, so yeah, there's a few few ideas there. Pretty much just any fish pattern profile, curly tail or a paddle tail with three to four inches um, always does the trick for me. All right, guys, my number four on the list of subsurface bass lures are hard body lures. Um, so these guys here, that top one there is a Jackal Squirrel in the 67 mil, and that bottom one there is a Lucky Craft XD Pointer. Now, these both of these guys are really, really good for dam fishing. Um, the XD Pointer will dive to about three meters, that guy there. Um, obviously, I use these for jacks too, and... Um, if it's a nice steep bank, if you're fishing a dam, fishing a dam, that's kind of that three, four, five meters deep. These XD pointers are really, really good. So what you're gonna do is throw into the deep bank rocks and all the timber, and it's gonna cruise down, it's gonna bounce off all the rocks and the timber and all that, and usually you'll get a few bass that way. So you're pretty much gonna represent bony brim or a little mullet in the, in the dams. Um, for this is going to fall in the same category. I didn't want to have minnows and crankbaits in the same. You know, they're pretty much the same lure, well, same category anyway. For this, for the sake of the video, um, so yeah, another little, just little crankbaits. 
That's just a little Pro Lures and a little Disco 38 there. Um, you know, Jackal Chubbies, all those kind of things, the Atomics. Pretty much just any little crankbait that you use for brim also pick up bass as well. So these are going to mean to be, you can still throw those on those deeper banks. Um, but generally I actually use these around skinnier creeks that in the deeper holes. Um, so they're going to get down that kind of meter and a half, two meters. So if there's a big bass in the holes, um, that smaller profile sometimes triggers a bite. So they're always good to have in your tackle box. Alright, so another option there, these are Duo Realist 77 suspending jerk baits. Um, again, just that skinny kind of profile. These are suspending, this is what you need. Uh, so these guys here, you can see the bibs a little bit smaller. So I will be throwing these on more shallower banks early morning. You see those, if you're fishing a dam um, and you get those kind of cow paddocks, that kind of real shallow. Um, tapered banks that you want to be throwing those guys around there so these guys only kind of dive to about a meter a meter and a half um, not really focusing there um, but yeah so like shallower banks are still around timber and all that kind of thing um, these things go off on bass but again you know awesome for flathead um, shallow bank jacks would eat those as well um, god you'd even get a decent sized broom on one of those so um, yeah, super realistic, really good colors. They're a little bit more expensive, um, but they do the damage. I've definitely upgraded the hooks on that guy. Um, but yeah, so shallow bank running jerk baits. And then I'll show you guys um, a clip right now. I'll roll it in. Um, basically, I've got it on very similar to this. So it's just an old school hard body lure. You can see the size of that bib. That dives to about three to four meters, so it's a little bit deeper. I like to run these, so what's happening here, I'll roll the footage now. So I've thrown into this big snag, and I'm just basically cranking it through. So the joys of hard bodies like this is it'll swim down, it'll bounce off the timber, and then once you feel it hit the timber, stop reeling, it'll slowly lift up and over the timber, and a lot of the time on this other side of the timber is when you'll get that fish. So you can see, I've just rolled it over, just got that hit off that snag there. Just give it a nice slow crank, and we're on there. So, um, yeah, really, really handy to have. All right, guys, so number three on my list. Can't be a list without the old American-style bass jig. Now, it's a little bit hard to see because of the colors. Um, so yeah, very interesting technique to pick up. It took me a little bit to understand how it worked, but once I understood it, it is a really, really good fun. So there's two different types. That there is a football jig, and this guy here is more of a swim jig or a cone jig, I guess. Um, so football jigs are really, really good for bouncing around rocks, um, bigger structures like that, because it obviously just bounces off it, and the skinnier, narrow head on the swim jigs are really good for timber kind of pulls through the timber a lot better so it's your eye um yeah so basically how you work jigs is you throw it deep deep into the snags and that's why i like these things so generally how i fish for bass i will go out top water throw a couple of hard bodies around a few chatter baits once once that sun's up at 11 12 o'clock if i'm still fishing i'll start bringing out the bass jigs. Um, so that sun is high in the sky now and the shade underneath the trees are really retrude under the trees and that's exactly where the jigs come in handy. So basically the bass will be out and about hunting and then once that sun comes out the sun's on the water, it's warming up the water, the bass can't hide in the shade pockets to ambush their prey so they will retreat into the snags where the shade is and that's where you need to throw the jigs. So these guys here They've got a little wee guard on the front there. So basically all I do is push that forward and then I like to fan that out. So it looks like that, little porcupine guy. So basically what's happened there is that is going to help stop brush and twigs and stuff snagging up your hooks. So they are pretty snag resistant. So you can get them quite deep into the snags. Um, and I obviously you gotta run a trailer. Um, I mean, you can fish just a plain jig like that, but I do like a trailer just to entice that that bass to think it's a bigger bait. Um, anywhere from a three eighth to a half ounce or a quarter ounce is really, really good. Again, depending where you're fishing. If you're fishing dams, 
steep walls, that type of thing, you kind of want a 3 8 to a half ounce jig. Um, if you're fishing shallow water, you can cut it down to even a 6 jig. Um, so, few options here that I like to run for trailers. So, I what you're basically representing is a prawn or a crawfish or a yabby, freshwater yabby, that kind of a thing. So, I don't ever put fish pattern profiles on jigs. I always throw on little crawls. So there's a few few different options that I use. Reflections, they do an absolute awesome looking yabby looking profile. Um, a couple of different colors. So I try and match the color of the plastic to the jig just so it looks more natural. So that guy there, I'd probably just go a darker color. Um, that darker blue would look really, really good on there. Um, OSP, they do some fantastic craw imitations as well just the three inch um, that packet's obviously been in my tackle box for quite some time um, it's looking pretty gnarly probably smells a bit weird too but anyway um, so they do a fantastic yabby profile as well um, but what I use a lot of a um, couple of reasons why are the little gulp crabby trailers so reasons why it's just because they are a very small profile little crab um, they're centered up, so that always helps. A very, very strong scent, and fish just love them. The only downfall of the gulp crabbies and any other gulp products are the baits are very, very soft. So if it's a very good jig bite, you'll be going through a couple of packets of these guys. But gulp crabbies are always good to have in your tackle box, no matter what. If you're fishing for flathead, brim, estuary perch, bass, um, you know, they're a fantastic little versatile little crab lure so yeah pretty much just chuck them on there throw it as deep as you want to into the snag and um, very very slow fishing you would basically just bring it up and just let it sit there what you want is basically for the fish to come and find the bait and then as soon as you see your line take off you pick up that slack and set the hook um, so anyway guys that's my number three on the list let's get number two baby all right guys so number two on my list is this is going to divide a few people here, um, but we got some chatterbaits. Uh, so these guys here are a Daiwa Steez chatterbaits. They are heaps of different ranges and brands of chatterbaits that you can get. Hopefully that focuses all right. Um, yeah, so chatterbait, or I think Americans call them a bladed jig. So basically it's just a jig head um, with a little blade on the front. And all that does is you throw it out and that little little blade vibrates like that and the whole thing just wobbles. It's just flashy and it looks like a little bait fish, I guess. Also back to that, that focuses. Back to that weed guard. It's um it's got one too. So again, push that forward, feather it out like that, and that's gonna help not snag up. So they are pretty snag free, pretty snag resistant because of that blade and that weed guard, so you can get it pretty deep into the snag. So I'm not a spinnerbait fan, so um, I don't know many people that throw spinnerbaits and chatterbaits. Um, I like the chatterbait over a spinnerbait because spinnerbaits for me, I just haven't had much luck on because I just think the bait is just too big. Like that is quite a small profile bait and um, a spinnerbait, you know, by the time you've got the the trailer on, two hooks, two big blades coming up here. I just think there's too much happening. Um, you know, a bass could come up, eat the back of the plastic, it could eat the, the shiny little thing on top. Um, you get a lot of hits, but you get a lot of misses. These guys are just a lot more smaller, and it's all compact. So, you know, a good bass is going to eat that whole thing in one go, and you're on. So, I like to throw these early time seasons, um, just onto pretty much into snags. Um, you know, the fish are just coming back from spawning, they're angry, they want their, their favorite snag, they're ter territorial. So pretty much a reaction bite like that is going to get them pretty excited and they're going to eat it. Um, it's pretty good in dams as long as there's bony broom and bait fish, gar, all that type of thing in the actual dam you're fishing, they can be pretty successful. But for the most part, um, I fish these in my skinny water creeks. Uh, looking for that reaction bite. You know, again, start with surface, and then I generally, if I can't get a bite on these guys, it's time to throw jigs. So, um, yeah, bunch of different colors, bunch of different brands. I like to fish um, a quarter ounce or a three-eighth ounce. Um, again, 
rockin' trailer on that one. That's just one of those fish arrow, little three inch fish arrow curly tail there. Not really focusing very well. Um, I put that, use those as trailers quite often because you can see how realistic the colors are. That little bit of silver hologramic uh, material inside looks really good and that curly tail just sends them absolutely crazy along with the, the movement of that chatterbait and the skirt going through the water. Really, really good. So that's number two on my list, the old trusty chatterbait. So comment down below, guys. I'm interested to know if you are a chatterbait person or a spinnerbait person. Um, like I said, I don't think, I don't know many people that throw both. So yeah, leave a comment down below. All right, guys, the time has come. My number one subsurface lure. It's a bit of a bank breaker, but fantastic lure. Probably no surprise if you guys watch a lot of my videos, I throw these around a lot. It is another chatterbait, but it is an Imakatsu Alive Chatter. So, what you basically got is just a little hard body minnow style lure. It's got a couple of skirts off the hooks, and you've also got that chatterbait blade. So, exactly the same thing as the chatterbaits, um, you know, throw into the snag. Generally, I will start to retrieve this guy straight away. I'll try not to let these guys sink down because if you sink that down uh, because of the trebles you will get snagged and these are $35 a pop so they are quite an expensive little bass lure to have. Um, obviously they come in a range of different colours. There's a gold one. I love throwing that around in dirty colour water. Orange belly. And you can even get different sizes as well. So you can get a next one up as well from this size here. A big bass will definitely still eat that, um, but if you're a cod fisherman, um, the next size up from this one will absolutely kill it. So yeah, I like these guys. This is my favorite subsurface bass lure of all time. Um, they're just amazing to throw. They're really, really awesome. If you get those kind of a natural color, you're getting the best of both worlds where you're getting that chatterbait, but you're also getting that kind of natural bait fish profile too. They're fun when they hit, basically throw it into the snag and just give it a constant roll out. Don't stop it or anything, just just a nice constant roll out. And when they hit these things, they absolutely destroy them. Um, but like I said, they are expensive, but they are really, really good to have in your tackle box, one or two. Um, and yeah, like I said, don't let these guys sink down too much. Throw them into the snags and roll it straight out. If there's a good bass there and it's hungry, it'll come up and eat that straight away. Um, so that's my number one subsurface bass lure of all time, the Imakatsu Alive Chatter. All right guys, so for the most part of the lures that I just showed you, I like to up my leader size. Now, I do use FC Rock. I Unfortunately, I didn't have 14 pounds, so I had to get this stuff here. Uh, this stuff's okay. Definitely not as good as FC Rock, in my opinion. Um, this is a little bit, holds a little bit more memory. Um, the FC Rock, honestly, is such a good leader. I love it. Um, but anyway, so yeah, once I'm throwing those Imakatsu Alive chatters, hard body lures, chatter baits, I'll love to up my leader size to about 14 pound um, also for bass jigs as well so because you are throwing deep into the snags it is a really good option to beef that leader size up um, if i'm throwing an imakatsu 35 dollar bass lure on six or ten pound gear you're probably going to get smoked and you'll be kicking yourself that you just threw a lot of money into the water so yeah up that leader size guys if the bass are hungry like if you're that deep into the snag, especially with bass jigs, you really, really don't miss any bites upping that leader. Um, if I was to put this 14 pound leader on um, surface lures, a lot of the time it will muck up the action of the lure because the line is too heavy. It'll drag the nose of the surface lure down and it won't work. So like I said in my last video, if you're having trouble with your surface walkers, your frogs, cicada lures if they're not swimming quite right you're probably using a leader that's a little bit too heavy so just ease it up and your lure will work a lot more anyway guys that is another 
studio talk done and dusted. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe to my channel. Really means a lot. I put a lot of effort into these videos, talking and getting out and fishing. And I love it all, but I also love feedback and obviously subscriptions and all that stuff is awesome as well. So um, any ideas of upcoming videos you guys would like to talk, me to talk about, drop them in the comments below. And um, yeah, until next time, I hope that that helped and hopefully you guys got a few ideas out of it um yeah but yeah give a few of those lures a crack you'll um you'll love them anyway guys take care out there you bunch of lip rippers and um yeah I'll talk to you soon you i can't hit that camera too too hard it's too expensive anyway guys